I'm going to continue the example from uh, video 1. 12, 12x squared plus 27y squared equals 108. And use it to talk about the geometric definition of an ellipse. And in particular, how would you find the foci and the eccentricity of an ellipse? Okay. So the geometric definition, I'll just say it briefly because I'll talk about it in class as well. Um, it's the set of all points P such that the sum of the distances from P to two fixed points F1, F2 is a fixed constant. And so that's going to be abbreviated as dPF1, that's the distance, plus the distance from P to F2 equals a constant. Well, it turns out that it's very handy to call that constant, set that constant equal to 2a. Because, <clears throat> and that makes it match up with the a that we've already seen from the equations. Okay, so the claim is that um, this does yield, doing a little algebra, it's in the book, and we might do it in class, I don't know. It's not as easy as the one with the, with the parabola, though. It does yield this equation, uh, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. <clears throat> it's not remotely obvious, and it does take a little bit of algebra and some squaring and stuff like that. Um, and where this a is actually equal to this a, okay, and then um, and then the question is where does b come from, and how does that have to do with the foci? Okay, so these are called the foci. That's the plural of if you want to just call them one of them, it's just focus, just like in the parabola case, okay. And uh, so that's something we I want us to take on faith in this video is that this really is the equation, and that uh, is at least in the case where we put the foci. If we're going to put coordinates here, we might as well make it simple. We put the foci on the x-axis on either side of the origin so that the figure will be symmetrical about both axes. Okay, so we're always going to do that right now. We'll shift it later. So we put the foci here, or equivalently, we choose our coordinates so that the origin is right in between, and these guys are on the x-axis. And then the claim is that if I look at all the points P so that the sum of this distance and this distance is always the same, I always get, I'm going to get an elliptical shape. Now why should that be equal to 2a? We already know what the interpretation of a is. It's this distance. It's half of the major axis. It's called the semi-major axis. It's half of that that larger diameter. Well, what we can do is we can put P at this point here. So then uh, the, the sum of the, the distances here um, is not too hard to figure out. So what we're going to do is we're going to put P at two special places. One is at the vertex. Ooh, I think I forgot to mention the vertex in the other video. Okay. The vertex is just, that's the intersection of the major axis with the ellipse. It's just the intercepts on the long axis. Okay. So if we put it at a vertex right here, then, and this distance is A, and let's call this distance from the center to the focus C. Okay, just so we have a name for that. And we'll see the relationship of A, B, and C in a minute. That's what we're getting to. If we, um, if we put this, the, the point P here, instead of at a random place here, then what are we going to get? The distance for, from the point to this focus is rather small. Then we're going to get D, P, F2 is just the difference. It's just A minus C. But then... I'm supposed to add that to the distance to F1. OK, but that is this A, and then this is symmetrical. That's also C, and so A plus C. Oh, hey, and I get 2A. Aha. OK. And so, in fact, if you have an ellipse where the, vert the uh, 
vertex is a units away from the center, then yes, that will at least satisfy this equation, at least at the vertex. So that's why this had to be a 2a. That's what the link is between these two places where the a occurs. Now what about a, b, and c together? Okay, so let's put, let's now put p at a, it's kind of an unofficial name, a minor vertex. It's not really what's called a vertex. In other words, in this case, the y-intercept. Intersecting this minor axis with the ellipse. Okay, now this distance we know is called b in terms of the equation description. How does that relate to the geometric description and how does that relate to the mysterious c, which is the foci? Okay, so we're gonna put the p up here. Let's see if I can do that real quick. Draw a line here and a line, oops, here, forget that blip, ignore that blip, okay. So now the, distance, the sum of the distance from this new version of the point P to F1 and F2, that's supposed to equal 2A. But look, that's an isosceles triangle. These are both equal by symmetry, and the total is supposed to equal 2A. So each of these guys is an A. So let's do that. Let's put the, let's just note that. That's an A right there, okay. Um, that A didn't show up very well, did it? Yeah, hopefully you can see an A. I didn't mean it to be right on the line there. But that distance is A, and this distance over here, let me see if I can do it better. Ah, there we go. Okay, that distance is A as well. So we've got a Pythagorean triangle. If, we, if this C is the distance from the center to the focus, and that's B, then that's going to be A, and so we get our fundamental relationship, A squared equals B squared plus C squared. And it's this picture that you want to rem remember of putting the point asymmetrically between here that you get a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Okay, so now, how does that work with their example? I wanted to review the basics first. Let's copy that down here, whoops. Okay, so rem remember, we already knew that that was x squared divided by nine plus y squared divided by four equals one. And so a was equal to three, because that's nine is three squared b is equal to 2. Okay, so c is just going to be the square root of a squared minus b squared. That's just solving this for c. c is always going to be positive because it's a distance. We don't need a plus or minus. And that's just going to be 9 minus 4. And so in this case, it's square root of 5. And so this distance turns out to be the square root of 5 to make this shape, I mean this isn't exactly a 3 by 2, but I was pretending it's a 3 by 2. So if that's 3 and that's 2, turns out the focus needs to be at root 5. Now one measure of how close to a circle this is, or how far away from it a circle it is, is the eccentricity. By definition, eccentricity, little e, is just c over a. And um, that eccentricity, if these two foci come together, you can probably believe that we get closer and closer to a circle. And that's where A and B become to be equal. Because if C is really small, A and B get close to being equal. And we know from way back when in the first video that if you have these two numbers being equal, it really is just a circle. So when the eccentricity is zero, it's a circle. As the eccentricity gets bigger and bigger, as the, the foci get further apart and get closer to the vertices, then you get a much more stretched out picture. And so here, it's just a very simple calculation. As with most of this stuff, we're not going into in incredible um, subtleties here. It's just getting familiar and then being able to do some examples. The eccentricity is just defined to be c over a. It's a measure of how stretched out it is. Here it's root 5 over 3. If we want to get a, f a sense of what that is, about 3 quarters. So this is about a 3 quarters of the way from, from a circle to as stretched out as you can possibly imagine for an ellipse. Okay.